Grand Theft Auto 4 is one of the best games I've ever played in my life. I don't think I was ever more hyped for a game than I was with that first Things Will Be Different trailer. It was like its own little event in a way and something I'll never forget. It's like trailers like that that get me to run out and pre-order the collector's edition with the really cool lockbox. Certainly one of the better collector's editions. And it's a shame that, you know, Rockstar hasn't given us some sort of remake or remaster up to this point. Like Bully and a couple of Rockstar games before it, Grand Theft Auto 4 often seems like one of those forgotten Rockstar games in a way. Many fans still love it and many fans still talk about it. Sure, it's not forgotten in our minds, but Rockstar themselves has done little to remind us how amazing this game is. Thankfully, that's what playing it for yourselves and reviews are for. Let's get into it. Well, since you put it that way, I mean... Right. Good. All right, right. all right. Let's yeah, go. let's do this. Without question, this game hasn't aged as well as something that came out just two years after it from Rockstar, which of course we now know is Red Dead Redemption. Their engine and animations came a long way in a really short time. Even Max Payne 3 still looks really good and is one of the most well-optimized PC games on the platform. But I try to remember a lot of these games, especially ones of Grand Theft Auto 4's age, as I played them at the time. It's not an awful looking game by any means, at least not to me, but at this point there have been indie titles or double A titles if you will with superior visuals, textures don't look as clean and amazing to me as they once did. Lighting and character models can still look decent to even very good depending on what's happening on screen. All of the cars still look great to me. I have no complaints with the visuals as far as the auto part of GTA goes. Depending on the location on the map and just time of day and other things that are happening, take Times Square for example, if you're walking around Times Square at night, it still looks absolutely amazing. You know, walking into a strip club, the lighting in those looks absolutely fantastic to me. One of the best things to keep in mind, I think, because I believe it still holds up really well, is the rain. Especially if we're talking about towards sundown or during the night for that matter, the rain can come straight down and Rockstar also implemented a really cool wind effect that makes the rain appear as if it's blowing around on the ground in certain areas of the game. The explosions, oh man, the explosions in these games. These aren't quite avalanche levels of awesome explosions, but, you know, they're still really good and my favorite in any GTA game. I used to think that 5 had better explosions for me, but I think I prefer 4, and that smoke effect you get still looks really damn good. It should be mentioned for those who aren't aware or, you know, didn't know that this was a thing on PC and, and maybe weren't paying attention to Grand Theft Auto 4 on PC at the time, but Grand Theft Auto 4 is one of the worst PC ports to ever grace the platform. And for the longest time, regardless of the hardware, you couldn't run this at 60 FPS. It is the strangest thing, 57 frames per second, loved me for the longest time. This game ran at 57 frames per second on my 2600K, 57 frames on my 4690K, and then years later, it was the same on my 1700X from AMD. It wasn't up until a couple of the more recent patches and my current setup, uh, 10700K and my 2080, that I could finally blow the doors off of this game and go well beyond 60. With all of that being said, the pro tip for this review is to not play this game beyond 60 frames a second. You will encounter all sorts of visual issues on top of gameplay issues that I never experienced with this game back on the Xbox 360 at launch. You know, just different things with traffic, doing odd stuff, the roads disappearing right in front of you for a second or two, or the very odd camera issue in a lot of the cutscenes. Believe it or not, I was at the end of the game before I started realizing this, and you know, playing the game at 180 FPS or something, it was causing a lot of issues. So just stick to 30, you know, lock it to 60, and enjoy the experience with those two performance options. That's my take, that's my opinion. Overall, you know, I, I still think the game looks good. It's just that I would be lying to you guys even as a big Rockstar fan, as well as myself. I'd be lying to myself trying to convince anyone that the visuals stand the test of time in some amazing way, because in my opinion, they don't. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
of your fucking head! The most important aspect of any game is the gameplay. If you don't have gameplay, what do you have? And even though the visuals don't really wow me much anymore, the gameplay itself is still really special. Grand Theft Auto 4 was ahead of its time. It was ahead of its time for Rockstar themselves, you know, gamers, and the industry as a whole. It came complete with new gameplay mechanics for the series, not necessarily the gaming industry as a whole. It wasn't entirely innovative, but there was a lot more attention to detail in this world and all new interesting physics for Rockstar to play with. It was a really special game at the time. Like a lot of other games of the Xbox 360 and PS3 generation, GTA 4 uses a cover system and it seems like after Gears and you know the earlier Uncharted games you know they weren't you know necessarily the the first but I would say games like that really help put cover systems on the map for better or for worse I remember thinking it was pretty flawless at the time and it still works very well but it should go without saying that cover mechanics have improved a lot since 2008. But some of the animation work done with Nico sliding or rolling into certain areas of cover, that stuff can't be ignored. It's another one of those things where Rockstar didn't have to do all that, but they did it, and that's why they're one of the best. The cover mechanics in Grand Theft Auto 4 are pretty simple. You choose your cover, you press your out of cover trigger, and you fire on the enemies. The way this game feels to play, you know, just to me, is still really good after all this time has passed. It doesn't have, you know, the awesome bullet damage of Red Dead or Max Payne 3, but it does what it needs to for the time. Like I said, you know, if someone were to ask me, do I feel like this game still functions really well and, and the mechanics are still really cool. Yes, I do, both of those things, but something felt off during this playthrough. You know, when you're in cover and you wanna throw, say, grenades or shoot the RPG, those two things in particular, I, I can't recommend it, but it could also be that I was playing this game well over the intended frame rate at the time for this game for where their engine was at at the time. But be careful because, you know, you may hit a wall that you're next to with either of those weapons and end up killing Nico by mistake. So yeah, you can blind fire from cover with a lot of the weapons. It would have been a real shame if something like that had been an afterthought. The actual shooting itself improved everything from the previous games, and a lot of that is due to what were at the time new physics. Shots feel impactful, and like you're really killing a guy in GTA 4. If you're spoiled on, you know, gore effects and a lot of that awesome attention to detail with bullet damage from other games, not just Rockstar games, but some of the other games that we've played since in general, you may feel a little let down by this. I'm spoiled on a lot of those things too, but for me, that's not me. I believe the shooting and gun mechanics in general are still some of the best GTA has, and I refuse to say otherwise. You may have also noticed by playing this or other GTA games, unlike Red Dead, Grand Theft Auto is a little less grounded and the realism factor is much less of an issue. What do I mean by that, all right? So an example for those that are a little lost on that, Nico can carry just about any weapon in the game at the same time because he simply pulls them out of his back or his ass and begins the ultimate never before seen destruction that we all know and love. It wouldn't be a big deal to me if they continued with this in the next Grand Theft Auto game where you know you can just carry every weapon you want and pull RPGs and AKs and like six different pistols out of your ass. It just it's not a big deal to me especially in a GTA game but something tells me they may take the Red Dead route and take an even more realistic approach to carrying weapons and other items in GTA. Although still very much a Grand Theft Auto game through and through, you know, new to the series is the very consistent use of the cell phone Nico has on his person everywhere he travels. Yeah, make no mistake, the phone is a major part of the game and there's a lot of fine details about the phone itself and several interesting numbers that you can call along with the game's characters, but... I remember when this game first came out, there were a lot of complaints. I mean, a, a ton of complaints about getting phone calls constantly from, you know, say, Nico's cousin and many of the game's other important characters. This was bothersome for me, too, at first on that original playthrough. But the more I played GTA 4 years later, just kind of going back to it off and on, it became a lot less of an issue. I realized the intent that Rockstar had here for the player to utilize the phone to the best of its capabilities. 
Among many others, sure, you'll have guys like Roman, Packy, and Brucey calling Nico to annoy him about going out for a drink or let's head to the strip club, but the player can also choose to just say no or even hang up on them. Sometimes that ringing phone can interrupt the progress of something else you're trying to do. You'll get side missions and main missions in the middle of driving to, say, Brucey's place for what will be his next mission. But what's GTA without the driving? The actual auto part of the name is probably very important to a game with a lot of driving. On the surface, Grand Theft Auto 4 is still very much GTA. You can steal or hotwire just about any vehicle you see. It should also be said that even though it's been a while since I've played some of the other GTA games, GTA 4 has a lot of chase missions. It seems like more so than previous games in the series from what I remember. But again, it's been a while. Chase and follow. Chase and follow missions, you know, both of those have been a big part of other GTA games, but GTA 4 has got to be one of the bigger offenders, depending on how you look at it. Not to say that any of this is boring. I didn't find any of it boring. Some of it was a little less fun than others, but there's a lot of chasing and a lot of following in this game, especially in vehicles, and it makes sense because, again, that auto part of Grand Theft Auto. Rockstar decided they wanted to go a completely different route with the movement and also the driving in general. Obviously, the GTA games before were all great fun, but they also felt, you know, looking back, a little floaty. GTA 4 is a lot more grounded with Nico's movements and especially the driving. The car physics, to me, are still incredible in this game, even after all this time. Each vehicle feels really unique to me. They all have, you know, their own weight and handling feels different no matter what vehicle you choose. I would assume that this was no easy task for Rockstar and it probably took them a really long time to perfect this and, and program this in a way that they were satisfied with as far as like the overall movement and new physics. The mission structure is the same as it's always been in previous GTA games. You see the letters on the map and you'll travel to each one of those to receive your next mission and meet some of the new characters. Missions can range from, you know, chasing and, and following missions again to, you know, climbing an apartment building to snipe a guy from the rooftops from afar and, of course, arming a vehicle with explosives and using it to blow up a building. A lot of gamers seemed upset that GTA 4 didn't have a lot of the same mechanics and features as previous Grand Theft Auto games. You can't say chop off heads with a sword. Nico can't gain weight. You can't go to the gym and get all kinds of gains. No doubt a lot of that is true and I can understand the argument and I can understand why people were a little pissed off, but the two games that came after also had things that the older games didn't have. Maybe the trade-off isn't worth it to some people, but for me, I never really bothered much with a lot of that stuff with CJ and San Andreas anyway. Still, those things didn't really seem to be a part of the original vision that Rockstar had here, but it would have been cool to give those that do care about those things the option and some extra things to do. You'll fly helicopters, you'll drive an endless amount of vehicles, some cooler and faster than others, you'll eat burgers at Burger Shot, kill members of the mob, blow all kinds of things up, and get sweet, sweet revenge on your enemies. Grand Theft Auto 4 is still a lot of fun to play. I'm telling you right now, if you've never played this game, if, if 5 is the only one you've played, or you know, you missed out after Vice City or San Andreas, then, then you must play this game. I, I really feel like you should play it. It was a very impressive title for the time. It was a huge achievement for Rockstar, and, and, and I just think the, the industry in general, you know, looking back, the visuals, again, aren't what they once were, but that can be fixed with EMBs and other mods on PC, but I wanted to play vanilla for this review. I killed people, smuggled people, sold people. Ah, yes, I can make this filthy woman fall under my dominion. Oh, arise, yes. Eat shit. In Grand Theft Auto 4, you play as Nico Bellic. He is a foreigner to America, and he comes to Liberty City seeking revenge as well as opportunity. Nico quickly finds that the chance at opportunity can come a lot easier for someone like himself, and revenge isn't always the answer. Another big reason for Nico coming to Liberty City is that his cousin Roman, you know, family is big for Nico. His cousin Roman has promised him many great things, amazing places to live, more women than he can handle, and more money than he'll ever be able to spend. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure for Nico that sounded good on paper. And no, at times Roman does have good intentions. He's a fraud, and most of the time he's completely full of it. In the first few hours of the game, Nico will come to realize that the American life promised would be entirely earned by himself and not by his lying, fraudulent, coward cousin. I do think this is one of the better GTA stories that Rockstar has created. It's probably the best in the series, and a lot of people that have played it will agree. The writing, the characters, the voice acting, just everything went up another notch from the previous two games. Truly a next generation leap in many ways. Nico will climb the crime ranks and become a name that other criminals will know and use to their advantage when they can. It's got some really cool twists and turns along the way. Just as you feel like Nico may be one step closer to his goals, the story knocks you back down again. And I love that. I've talked many times in the past about where I feel like Rockstar creates these really awesome characters that are not necessarily good men and some of them not necessarily good women. Just not really good people in general. We like these characters. We enjoy these characters a lot for a lot of different reasons. But so many of them do things that they don't have to do just to satisfy something that they believe is needed and justified. Sure, characters like Nico or John Marston often kill characters worse than themselves, but that doesn't make them good men. There's a really good line in the first season of True Detective that I like, there's a prostitute talking to one of the detectives and she tells him that he's a good man, I, I believe is the line. And he tells her, look, we're not good men. We just keep the other bad men away from the door. And I think that's a lot of what we get in some of these Rockstar games from some of these characters, as well as other games too. So, you know, it's really cool to see that. It's really cool to hear that, not just in a game, but from a, a very well-written TV show as well. There are moments and there are situations in, in these games and, and especially Grand Theft Auto 4 where, you know, the characters do have good intentions. Characters like Packy, Brucey, even though I feel he can be a little annoying, but I think him being annoying and a little over the top is sort of the point. Other characters like little Jacob, I like them. You know, a, a lot of great characters here. Even some of the villains are fun. I don't want to say you're spoiled too much, but GTA 4 story to me is a must play. If you're one of those story gamers that enjoys well-written games over, you know, gameplay or functional mechanics, this is one of the better Grand Theft Auto games you can play, if not the best in terms of single player stories. Even though the gameplay is still really good, I, I just if, if you prefer story and, and that's, you know, a big thing for you over everything else, this is definitely one of the better Grand Theft Auto games. Calling me a phony, calling me a snitch, calling me all kinds of bullshit. Big deal. Yeah, big deal. I don't think it would be fair to Rockstar, especially with me being a pretty big fan, if I left this review without at least a mention of the sound. Rockstar deserves that from me, from the voice acting and the cutscenes. Again, you know, just taking it up another notch or two from the previous games to the chatter you hear on the streets of Liberty City that just make it feel a lot more alive than it already does to the awesome music on the radio. This is easily one of the best that they've done. And I will say it sucks that many of the songs were removed some time ago in a patch and it's no longer as special as it once was on release, but there's still some really great stuff here. There's always the independent radio option on PC where you can add your own private collection of MP3s of which I'm sure you've no doubt paid for and it's complete with its own brand of commercials and it's filled with that really great satire that we've come to know and love from Rockstar. GTA 4 is widely considered by a good handful of gamers to be, we'll say, 7th Gen's most overrated game. It does have one of the highest ratings ever for a game. It sold extremely well for a game that those people feel isn't very good. I'm on the opposite side of that. I think it has its place and GTA 4 sits right where it should be and I will never forget this incredible experience. My friends and I would take the free roam option online back in the day for the first hour or two of our gaming sessions. We would try and decide, you know, what we're going to play. What competitive game are we going to play for the night? You know, just playing Grand Theft Auto. Okay, we're going to play Splinter Cell tonight. We're going to play Gears tonight. And we just, you know, do the free roam, roll around, kill each other, kill randoms. It was just a lot of fun to mess around in that masterfully crafted city that Rockstar worked so hard on. That free roam online option with friends, you know, that massive open city, it just, you know, the quality of Rockstar, 
it wasn't something you could find just anywhere. Hell, there weren't many experiences as special as GTA 4 anywhere else, period. I gave it a 10 then, I'm gonna give it a 10 now. It's one of my favorite games ever and the best GTA game you can play for the story. Everyone has their favorite, GTA 4 is mine. It's just no longer for the visuals and the gameplay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. Make sure to give me a thumbs up if you liked it. You know, share this video anywhere possible. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, have you played this game? How long has it been since, you know, you played it last? Have you never played this game? Did this review make you want to play it at all? Just let me know in the comments. In the next reviews, we're going to take a look at Uncharted 3 for the PlayStation 3 as well as the PlayStation 4 with the remastered 60 FPS versions. And we're going to take a look at Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4 after that. So I hope you guys are looking forward to those. Thanks again. Take care. Peace. Get back,